Hi! Have you ever tried to analyze a poem, maybe for a class or an essay that you're trying to write, or maybe you're publishing, you're trying to publish a magazine article and you want to analyze a poem? Well, I'm going to help you do that. I'm Professor Marcielle Brandler. I've been teaching college for about 30 years. I taught high school, junior high, and grade school years ago as well. So we're going to get right into it. And the very first thing you want to do is actually read the poem. So I'm going to read a poem to you from the book The Breathing House. So here it is, The Breathing House by Marcielle Brandler. And the poem is a very easy one. It's called What the Ugly Boy and the Pretty Girl Have in Common. She is stared at. His face is passed over. Neither of them are seen. She's so cute, it's assumed she's spoiled. He's so ugly, he's cute. He can't believe she likes him. She's afraid he'll find something he doesn't like. They marry. Over the years, his face acquires dignity and her face gains character. Now, people say how alike they look. So, we read the poem first and we absorb its, the feeling of it, the message, whatever we can, and then we reread it and we go line by line and write down our feelings about it. Doesn't necessarily have to me be the meaning of the poem. And so, <clears throat> the, you know, first you're acquainting yourself with the poem and then you're jotting down ideas and thoughts. So you'll see that it says she is stared at. Okay, so it's first the, the title is What the Ugly Boy and the Pretty Girl Have in Common. And you would think, well, maybe they don't have much in common. But she is stared at. And beauty is always attractive to people. We always want to look at a beautiful person or a beautiful thing. The problem is he's passed over. Nobody wants to look at him. And yet, the thing they have in common, neither of them are seen. That's a very, very important line. We all want someone to see us, even children. Mommy, look, Daddy, look. Teacher, teacher, look at me. We all want to be seen. And not just seen for our physical beauty, not avoided because we are not as attractive as we would like to be, but we want to be seen in our heart. And so as you're reading poems, you just sit with it and think about it and jot down ideas. When have you not been seen? When has someone told you you were beautiful? Or someone wanted to go out with you only because you were eye candy, as they call it, or a trophy wife, or you were ugly and nobody really, somebody was rude to you because you weren't as good looking as the next person. So you write down all those ideas and just sit with it. Sit with the poem. And uh, you, you're, you're allowing yourself to be free. Uh, and I do have a tape on YouTube called Trust the Process, where you allow ideas to flow and you don't judge your ideas. And then it says, um, he, she's so cute, it's assumed she's spoiled. What is your response to that? What are the ideas that you have? And so you just go through the poem and write down the ideas. Think about beauty and ugliness. And then it says that she's afraid he'll find something he doesn't like. Right now, oh yeah, you like me because I'm beautiful. And it says he's so ugly, he's cute. Think about a sloth. A sloth is such a goofy little animal crawling up the tree, and they're so ugly, they're cute. And so think about the different animals, creatures, people that you might think about. 
um, and write those ideas down. Then, when you have written those down, and you know you might want to take a break in between each of these jobs, and if you see a, a tail going by, it's my cat, Sylvester. He follows me all over the place. And so then you reread the poem for more ideas. You know, and take a break from the poem. Go outside, go for a walk. I always take a piece of paper with me because oftentimes I come up with more ideas. And you, um, then you type up some of your ideas. Take a break from them and then expand on them. Go to the YouTube, uh, to, to the internet or YouTube, and type in the ideas behind beauty, behind ugliness. Look up words like attractive, beautiful, um, avoidance, and uh, um, how, how beautiful people succeed, how beautiful people are used, how not good-looking people supposedly don't succeed whatever the ideas that you can come up with, and things from your own life. And then also, another very important thing that you may want to look at, you don't have to, are how the lines are broken up. And so if you look at, if you can see the poems here, the poem here, she is stared at. His face is passed over. Neither of them are seen. So you talk about the language, how spare the language is. She is stared at. And then the beat. So there is a rhythm. She is stared at. His face is passed over. Neither of them. And then on the next line, are seen. Why is it broken up like that? What might that be? And then uh, how simple, the simplicity of the language. That's very important. And the next tape, we're going to talk about a more complicated poem, Eden, which is uh, what I call a, a more poemy poem. This poem I call an audience pleaser because anybody can understand it. You're up there reading your poetry. People completely get it. It's very, very simple. Even a third grader could understand it. So. Um, this is in my book, um, The Breathing House, page 30, and there are more, more poems, and I also have a, uh, a book of how to analyze poetry, a poetry workbook, and you can see the poetry analysis in my book, Fun with Grammar, and uh, that is, both of these books are available on Amazon.com. Fun with Grammar by Marcielle Brandler, and it's on page 83, The Way to Begin an Essay on a Poem, and there are exercises here. So I hope this helps you a little bit, and we will be back. This is a series of writing, grammar, and all kinds of other issues. You can visit my website for a lot more called English with Marcielle. I'm Professor Marcielle Brandler, and I'm wishing you great English language. Bye for now.